Welcome to the planning meeting. Uh, one of the committee members is actually stuck in traffic uh, and will be joining us. Uh, you might be in the wrong place, I'm afraid. Sorry? Did we not get the uh, speakers working at the back then? Well, I'll do my best, but I don't have a very loud voice, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, good evening and welcome to the planning committee. Any better? My name is Councillor Anissa Leach and I'm the Chair of the Committee. My role this evening is to ensure that the Committee runs smoothly, having regard to procedure, behaviour and ethics. To explain who the rest of the people on the tables here tonight are, to my immediate right is the Council Solicitors, who will give advice to the Committee on any procedural or legal matters that might arise. To my left are the Council's Planning Officers, Highways Engineers, and environmental health officers who will present the application this evening and give any technical advice to the committee which may be sought. The rest of the people whom you will see down both sides of the tables are the elected members who will consider the applications this evening and make the decisions. Welcome Phil. Before each application is considered there will be a short presentation by the planning officers. In the event that an application has received a qualifying petition signed by 25 signatures or more, one representative of the petition will be invited to address the committee in support of the petition for up to five minutes. In the case of there being more than one petition, then somebody can speak on behalf of each petition if they wish. If a petitioner addresses the committee, then the applicant or their agent will be invited to make representations to the committee in support of their application, again for up to five minutes. However, if a petitioner has not addressed the committee, then the applicant or their agent will not be invited to make any representations. A ward councillor can address the committee in relation to an application. The ward councillor is not restricted in the amount of time that they speak. However, once the ward councillor has returned to the public gallery, they may not return to take part in any further debate that may follow by the committee. The application will then be open to debate and discussion by members of the planning committee, who will then make a decision on the application. The order of tonight's agenda may vary subject to the numbers of people who are here in relation to a specific agenda item and subject to the committee agreeing to the order being varied. <coughs> if a site visit is requested and approved by the committee, then that matter will not be discussed any further this evening and will be discussed at a subsequent meeting following the committee visiting the site. Okay, uh, can I just ask for approval of the minutes, please, committee? Yes, thank you, Chair.
site visits. We are now not going to be looking at agenda item 4, St Luke's Tennis Club, this evening. So anybody who's here for any of these applications is free to leave if they wish, but also free to stay if they wish. The next item that we're going to have um, a site visit on is Agenda item 9, which is land adjacent to St. Peter's CE Primary School, the nursery allotment gardens. The next one is Agenda item 11, which is 38 Thurston Road. The next one is Agenda item 13, which is 560 Pensby Road. And the last one is Agenda item 14, the land at Hazel Dean Way. So we will not be discussing those any further this evening. So if anybody would like to leave now, we'll give you a couple of minutes to leave. And if there are any gaps at the front, if people can come forward, it might help with the, uh, the problems we're experiencing. Can I just ask people to move further forward, please? Can the people at the back come and move forward because of the, the speakers? Previously mentioned 
is within the primary industrial area. The walkway down to Woodside around the primary wharf will remain open to public access. There are also a considerable number of viewing locations along the waterfront where events on the river could be viewed and access to the promenade will remain with the exception of a small portion along the front of the application site below the existing car park. The loss of the car park itself is not considered to warrant a refusal of planning permission as other locations for parking are available and income derived from this car park suggests a very low level of use between two and three cars a day over the last four years. The closure of the short section of waterfront uh, of the proposed development in front of the proposed development will not impact, impinge on guided historic walks as this section of the promenade is already closed to public access due to it being gated off at the adjoining commercial property. That part of the historic route and circular trail along the perimeter of Priory Wharf to Woodside and beyond will be maintained. Much has been made in relation to the historical context of the site and the proposals have been carefully considered by English Heritage who confirm they have no objections to the proposals. The site is not subject to statutory protection in terms of it being designated as a scheduled monument. English Heritage have confirmed that it would not be possible for them to make a case for scheduling as the site does not meet their key criteria for doing so. Indeed, it is English Heritage's view that any early features of the site prior to its use as a car park are likely to have either been swept away or obscured by the later formation of the built embankments or the wider industrialisation of the area. The site is also sufficiently separated from Birkenhead Priory, some 400 metres plus to the south, um, to have no impact on this Grade 1 listed building, with a number of industrial and commercial uses present between the site and the Priory. As previously outlined, none of these matters which were reported and considered by the Planning Committee only seven months ago formed the Council's reason for refusal for the last application. All of these matters have again been properly considered and the development proposed would not impact on these issues sufficiently to warrant a reason for refusal. Turning then to the earlier reason for refusal and the potential impact that the early proposals were considered to have on residential amenity for the occupiers of Priory Wharf, uh, namely by virtue of noise, general disturbance and poor outlook. This application seeks to address that reason for refusal by removing roof lights from the western and northwestern roof pitches in order to reduce light pollution towards Priory Wharf. The new proposals also relocate the pedestrian door on the north elevation of the warehouse to the eastern side of the building, again directing the potential for any noise disturbance away from Priory Wharf. Elevational changes have also been made so that 10 metres of glazing along the northern and western elevations break up what was previously a stark overbearing elevation. The glazing at this point is also non-light emitting. The proposals also allow for the introduction of evergreen screen that would give rise to the effect of a green or natural living wall. This would further minimise the impact of a stark and bland industrial elevation as previously proposed. Additional landscaping and tree planting along the site boundaries secured by condition would further assist in softening the impact of the development. Uh, the ridge height of the, of the uh, proposed building has also been lowered um, so the, the, roof, uh, the roof gradients aren't as steep. A detailed noise assessment has also been undertaken and appraised on behalf of the Council. That assessment considers noise to be kept to a minimum. No manufacturing will take place um, at the site and general use of the warehouse is restricted by condition uh, between 8am and 6pm. An assessment of noise from the jetty has also been undertaken and concluded that again there will be no significant disturbance caused to near nearby residents due to the infrequency of its use, the short duration of noise at this point, and having regard to existing ambient background noise already in existence from the river uh, and other maritime uses. The proposed development will not feature heavy industrial use or manufacturing, but will consist of light industrial use by way of offices and warehousing. 
The changes that have been secured, together with a more detailed and thorough assessment of potential noise disturbance, are considered to be acceptable and overcome the previous reason for refusal. The proposals seek to bring highly skilled, long-term employment to Birkenhead, contributing positively to the Wirral's investment strategy, the local economy and the borough's skills base. The proposals will not have an adverse impact on adjacent businesses or other nearby industrial and or commercial uses. Access and hiring arrangements to the site are all considered to be acceptable. The proposals have been screened for environmental impact assessment, with impacts arising from these proposals considered to be low. The proposals have also been screened against the habitat regulations, again with impacts being considered to be low and within accepted low levels. The use of the site at present is uncontrolled and unconditioned. It is, it is considered that the proposals represent an opportunity to add some control over the use of the site and hours of operation that do not, re that do not currently exist. The proposals provide the opportunity for new employment in the area, promoting sustainable communities and economic development. <coughs> As previously considered, the proposals would not harm the historic environment, but a condition is proposed for an archaeological watching brief during development. The site is located within the primarily industrial area, an area within which uses such as the proposed development should be directed. It is considered that the new proposals are sufficient to overcome the previous reasons for refusal and weigh in favour of the development being approved this time. If members are minded to approve this revised application, it is proposed to amend condition 8 um, to read as follows. The scope of the decommissioning method statement shall be agreed in writing with the local planning authority and prior to any decommissioning taking place, um, and will be informed by standard environmental management methods in place at the time and shall include, but not be restricted to the following. Timing of works to avoid overwintering winter in periods. Details of method statements, including the adoption of least intrusive methods for the intertidal marine structures and methods to minimise crushing and noise. Um, it's also proposed to add a further condition, uh, which would be condition 19, that would read, no development shall commence until details of a noise attenuation scheme has been submitted to and approved in writing by the local planning authority. The development hereby permitted shall be implemented and thereafter operated in accordance with the approved details. The application is recommended for approval. Three petitions of objection have been received, containing a total of 176 signatures. A petition of support, containing 710 signatures, has also been received and representations have been made by local board councillors. Do we have um, the lead petitioners here against the application? Are we having one person to speak or are we having three people to speak? Three people. Okay, um, have you decided on the order of who's coming first? Mm -hmm. If you can decide amongst yourselves and the first person can come to the front here please. I have to admit I found this to be 
an extraordinary decision with no thought for the feelings of residents or regular users of the public car park. I have seen evidence of the assessments that have undertaken, but sadly, I have not seen any uh, assessment of human rights. What about the children who live just the other side of the wall on Alabama Way? What about the lack of sunlight or even ordinary daylight? Their human rights are a great concern to me. Oh yes, they will be able to look upwards and see a patch of sky, but that is just about all. The council have turned a blind eye to the fishermen for years. You cannot just wipe them away and decide their human rights are of no consequence. This is not just about Pride of War, it's about all the residents in that area. The car park is used as a recreation area for, uh, for other children, because there is nowhere else for them to enjoy. The roads are narrow and parking is of a pre premium. What of the disabled population that use that area on a regular basis? There is so much to discuss on this issue, but I only have a few minutes to defend the people who use it and need this last immunity afforded to us. I ask you to think very hard before you make a decision on this application. <coughs> Why should residents be forced to live right next door to an industrial unit? What about our human rights? It speaks volumes when the only immunity left to us in this area is a car park. Thank you. Thank you. Could you just turn the microphone on, please? Thank you. Thank you for keeping within the five minutes. Uh, can we have the next person to speak against the application, please? As we do have um, three petitions against, um, can I just try, uh, with the other two people, try and restrict what you have to say to something new rather than repeating what's already been said, if you can. Um, could you state your name and you have five minutes? <coughs> I'm Professor Michael Hill and I'm the Managing Director of LDRA, which is on the south side of the car park. Last time, this council rejected this proposal under policy EM6, which comes in two parts. One of which it says that there should be no adverse effect on neighboring businesses. That will not be the case. My company has three quarters of a million pounds worth of internet servers in our building adjacent to the wall, to the fence. We cannot leave those servers there during building operations due to the vibration and dust which will inevitably be a result. So we will have to move those computers. We will move them to our Newbury office. Along with those computers, we will have to transfer 10 of our staff who support that network for our international operations. We're not a small company. We are operating on all the continents of this world. So if the computers go to Newbury, there's no point in bringing them back. That means we'll migrate the whole of the company down south to Newbury. This will be a loss of 50 jobs to work. These are jobs which average over £70,000 per annum in wages. They're not negligible jobs. So that's the first point. The second point, as I mentioned last time, we were planning to expand. We bought an extra component of our building in order to expand a software test laboratory. It's the first that will be in Britain. It's a new development and a new concept that the government is um, pushing forward. We are in a unique position to exploit that. So you've got the contrast between our company, which is modern, very high tech, active all over the world, against the interests of a company like Camel Beds, which, let's face it, has been bankrupt once before, and is dependent almost wholly on government handouts, which could change, for instance, next May. The second companies which are going to be affected adversely are the charter boats. And they've been picking up and putting down passengers on that slipway for years. In fact, that's one of the key things that's been going on there for 800 years. And 
despite the fact that the council officers say that it's forbidden, there's not a single sign up there in any way indicating that this is forbidden activity. There is a gate, but it's a step over gate. I know that because I've stepped over it. It's very simple. Everybody just steps over it and uses the slip line. And I've taken legal advice on this, and it's very unlikely that the council will be able to stop those people doing that operation. The second part of EM6 is loss of public amenity. And a lot has been said about that. It was mentioned that English heritage are not interested in the site, which is interesting because I have with me an email from Dr. Marion Varta, who did the original survey for English heritage on the Priory. She did dug the footings out and so on. And she is very concerned about this development. She thinks that that Monk's Ferry is um, a prime archaeological site and ought to be preserved. Unfortunately, I, wasn't able, I only got this information today, so that's brand new. The um, Cabal there had mentioned seven possible sites. Site four, which is a bit further upstream from um, the, 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 our site, Site 4 has already been used for an almost identical purpose. They've been taking boats out to the rigs and bringing them back, and with people on board. The site is actually owned, I believe, by Peel Holdings, who are an owner of Camel Lairs. So they own it, they've got something. Um, you there. Have, sorry, you have one minute. Fine. And the, um, I have tried to buy this site off the council. I've offered a quarter of a million pounds for it. And I've not even had an acknowledgement from the executive offer, officer of that fact. Although I did email everybody else to let you know that that offer was on the table. So I think, to, I feel that the council officers here have done us absolutely no favours whatsoever. They've suppressed information. Where's the planning details for Priory Wharf and the commercial park? They don't seem to exist. We've checked at planning and we can't find them and they're not listed in the documents. So there's something going on here, and I'm extremely concerned about that. Shortly, I dare say, Camel Bears will show you some computer graphics. I caution you to ignore those computer graphics, because as an international expert on computer software, I know how easy it is to fake those results. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Suites of offices and store for pre-made small components 
that can be used to maintain the wind turbines in the Liverpool Bay. Alabama waves received criticism and opposition in the press and on the radio, mainly from the adjoining properties. We felt that there needed to be a demonstration of the support that does exist in local businesses and suppliers to the offshore industry, and we've collected over 700 signatures, which I believe you have before you. These are from workers whose livelihood depends on work in the middle, and it is vital that council are seen to support any appropriate development opportunities in the area. Emma Laird have identified this site as, a wholly, as wholly suitable for the proposed development, which requires an all tidal access to the river and a land base in an appropriate planning zone that is, an industrial, that is industrial. This development fulfills all the planning requirements, as can be seen from the officer's report before you. And on behalf of the signatures, I would urge the committee to recognise the value that such a bespoke development will bring to the area. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being so succinct with that. Okay, is the agents or the applicant here? Would you like to come forward to speak? Again, if you let us have your name, press the silver button and um, you have five minutes. Thank you. Silver so to the bottom of the, the top panel. Right? Okay. Thank you. My name is Mike Vukovic. I am the name on the application. I'm the project manager for this scheme. Uh, the purpose, as we well know now, is to maintain and support the wind farm infrastructure that exists and that will be constructed in the Liverpool Bay area. It is not a new dock. It is not a shipyard. It is going to be a high-tech office, fully modernised and handling small components through the warehouse. There will be no fabrication, no construction work. The location is based upon the need to be able to access the river at all states of tide. And we've looked at several other locations and been unable to find another one that fulfills this role and still connects to an appropriately designated area. Uh, there has been mentioned that we have a similar facility further down the river, and that is quite true and that has been allocated for construction work as opposed to maintenance. We would not want to tie up that facility for 25 years as that would preclude other developments within the shipyard that we're looking at. So the two different applications. It's of note that no objections have been received from any of the statutory consultees on any planning matters. That includes English Heritage and Natural England. Application to the Marine Maritime Organisation as the authority for planning matters in the river has already been successful and the licence permitting the construction of the pontoon and Linksbound bridge back to Alabama Way has already been issued. The proposed development is located in an area designated with a new development plan as primary industrial and this is the main significant point about its location. When we applied for consent last year uh, several objections were received, mainly from residents of Priory Wharf. And the application was rejected by the committee on the grounds of amenity, loss of amenity, potentially to the residences. There were no, no other grounds for rejection. We went out and looked at how we could improve the design and improve and reduce any effect on the properties. And we focused around the three points of noise, visual and disturbance. The noise has been analysed and concluded that there is no unacceptable loss of amenity for the residents. To look at the visual aspects and the disturbance, we held two um, consultations inviting all residents of Priory Wharf, sending out over 130 invitations. <coughs> In the event, residents from only 11 properties at Priory Wharf attended the consultations. And of those, only eight of the properties were assessed as being in an area directly affected by the development, that is, down Alabama Way and around the corner of the frontage. 
We have valuable discussions and several of the points made by residents have now been incorporated into the design before the committee. This includes windows and balcony, altering the landscaping so that new trees did not obstruct views of the river, altering the roof lights in the building. It is of note that of the eight represented properties from the development side of Priory Wharf, only five have written in with personal objections. So that is five residents out of the 48 potentially overlooking the development. At the first application that was refused last year, residences in this section of Priory Wharf <coughs> objected. There were 15 objections to the last application, but only five to this application, which I believe shows how we have improved and worked on the design to the benefit of those residences. So we believe that we've successfully taken on board the committee's comments from last year and satisfactorily addressed the considered loss of immunity for the adjoining residences and that all of the planning considerations have also been properly met. We would ask you to support and approve this application. Thank you, thank you for keeping within time. Um, the ward councillors here, I believe. Jane, would you like to come forward, please? <coughs>
On the Mersey waterfront, amongst failures of major historical importance, the site is so important historically and visually, visually that in the 1840s, a site in Dremoyne, Sydney, was named Birkenhead Point after this area. To this very day, a large building has the name Birkenhead Point, which can be seen right across uh, Sydney, seen for miles. It's a very prominent area, and there's actually a tramway street nearby too. Tourism is the most, there is no mention tonight of the uh, importance of, uh, of tourism. Tourism, tourism uh, income is the number one uh, income uh, in the uh, uh, we're, sorry, Merseyside economy at this moment in time. And of all that tonight, no one has even mentioned the, the, the income, the importance of tourism to a uh, Merseyside. So it's the most important money area, money area in the Merseyside economy, and the income is continually increasing. Heritage tourism is a major part of that, and this will seriously damage the heritage environment. The thought of an industrial shed blighting this exceptional site, which is included in all Mersey Ferry River tours, and from the lines to fills myself and local heritage groups with horror. Why on earth, after years and years of refining the Merseyside tourism product, why would anyone want to blight the waterfront with this monstrosity? Wirral has invested in highlighting and developing the ancient Birkenhead Priory site. This development is far too near. Please remember the best views of the local waterfront are from St Mary's Church Tower, uh, Birkenhead Priory, which is visited by large numbers of visitors every year. At the last planning meeting on this application, not enough was mentioned about the importance of this site. Here we have this year another major tourism heritage event QR connections with the early area, a number of three lines attending. Why on earth would we want to desecrate this site? I've also, as the gentleman mentioned previously, I've also been concerned as heritage champion about certain observations by English heritage. I am so concerned that I've asked for a meeting with the regional director of uh, North West to discuss this issue and a number of decisions and opinions that are seen by myself and others. Uh, our world heritage groups to be damaging to world's heritage. Thank you. Okay, um, there was um, a bit of a conflict between what two people said there regarding uh, the refusal. Uh, and what I'd like Matthew to do is just clarify that it was refused, uh, the previous application was refused on the grounds of EM6. Can I just ask you to clarify on what grounds? Thank you to you, Chair. Yes, uh, the, the application, the previous application, was refused uh, on the grounds of policy EM6, having regard to the potential impacts to the residential um, properties at Priory Wharf only. Um, that was specifically cited in the reason for refusal. Thank you. Um, I'll just open this up to committee then. Any comments or observations? As Thank you, Chair. Um, would you just take up on the last point that Matthew mentioned that um, the grants for refusal last time the uh, impact on the immunity of Pride Wharf. I mean, that is true. <coughs> I suspect it wasn't the only factor that the committee was taking into account when uh, it voted to, uh, to refuse the earlier application. Um, when Mr. Wood spoke uh, very well, he spoke too, he, he said it was vital to support appropriate uh, development, and, and I think that's very true. But, there's a lot of aspects about this which I feel are questionable or inappropriate. Uh, just a couple of things I'd like to draw on from what we heard previously. First of all, the, when we heard the previous uh, report, the officer's report, you, you would almost feel that this site has very low immunity value. Um, I don't think that's, that's true at all. I think a lot of people access this area. If you read the report, it includes disabled people, anglers, uh, pleasure boats, um, and I think we're all concerned about inequalities across the borough. It's something we all talk about a lot. And if you consider the, act, the access to open areas in that part of Birkenhead, this is very unique in that respect. And I don't think we should be closing off uh, access to important areas of immunity for the local population. I think we, it's important to consider the health, uh, the health benefits that accrue from that. Um, I think the issue that was raised earlier about the access
access to the slipway. I think that's a very pertinent issue that for many hundreds of years people have been using this, um, this point to access uh, the riverbank. And I would question the, the legal status of that. I think in, under common law there must be at least a question mark over whether we have the right to block off public access to that slipway. Um, the heritage and tourism aspects are very, very important. I think the, the link between Burton and Priory, Monks Ferry, and the wider heritage of uh, Woodside and Hamilton Square is an underused asset that has significant potential, which would be undermined if, if this application uh, goes ahead. And just finally, I'm concerned about the, the size of the, the facility relative to the area concerned. It's a relatively uh, compact area. And if, um, if certainly as I hope, and, and we can reasonably expect that the, uh, you know, the wind energy industry continues to expand, I think there's a question mark as to whether that facility will have sufficient capacity for the longer term. And I was quite pleased to see in the report, you know, there was analysis of the various other options that were available to uh, locate this facility. I found that quite instructive, and I wasn't entirely um, convinced when we read the officer's report. I would refer members specifically to page 104 that deals with the Bromper Pool and Bromper. And in that it says that an O&M facility is considered to conflict the shipping channel of recent dock in the Manchester Ship Canal. Existing commercial uh, vessel movements at this location would be considerably greater than other locations downstream. Now that doesn't strike me as an overwhelmingly insurmountable obstacle to uh, locating such a facility as this in that location. I think there are other options, and I think it came up in the previous application, that the feeling was that whatever happens with this application, the wind farm facilities, etc., will be serviced from somewhere. And, and my feeling is that there are other alternatives available that can be considered. Yeah, thank you, Chair. And just a, just a, a couple of quick points, really. Um, I think when the applicants spoke right before, they mentioned about um, the, the the sort of the limited opposition, almost, from, from the residents of Priory Wharf. Well, I think, firstly, I, I don't believe that to be the case, but also, secondly, um, I think it works both ways. Um, to say that there was only sort of a limited amount of people impacted by it is also... I think then we take into consideration that the petition of nearly 700 people that you had in favour, how many of those were, were directly impacted um, on, by this, um, this proposal. Um, and, and I can't accept that you didn't write to the 130 households because you didn't believe that they were impacted in some way. To then narrow that number down in, in your analysis, I, I, I don't think is fair. But in terms of, of the sort of the application itself. Last time um, I, I voted against this um, because I wasn't happy with the impact it had had on the immunity of those residents who, who live in Priory Wharf. I'm still not happy with that. Um, I don't think the changes that have been put forward sufficiently address the concerns that were raised by the residents. So, um, just thought I'd like to make that point. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, I think we've got to look back at this and decide just what we can and cannot do. First of all, this application has been made. We cannot start recommending that it might be somewhere else, as much as that might be desirable. We have to look at this particular application on its merits and decide whether it is a suitable solution for this area. Bearing in mind, we're talking about an area which is designated for industrial use. It's not designated for residential use. And of course, this was the problem that we inherited when MDC, Mediterranean Development Corporation, in its wisdom, decided to delegate the flats as a residential area. That would have been totally at conflict with our own urban development development plan. Having said that, there's just two things I'd really like to comment upon. One, these people who are in the flats, I wouldn't want to live there if this was going to be built next door. That's my first statement, quite clearly. But from a planning perspective, from planning legislation, they are not unfortunately entitled to a view, and the fact that they're going to lose it is not something that we can talk about. 
And I haven't yet seen, and I think we ought to see it, what these buildings look like in plan and what they look like in elevation as a new design. Because we need to see what these look like in terms of what the outlook might be. Nobody's asked that question yet, and I'm very, very surprised they haven't. Have we got some drawings available that we can see just what we're looking at? And I think while that's being put on, we do have to be very careful. Uh, I'm very unhappy about this development, no question about that. But I do not necessarily believe that something of this type, low profile, not major um, manufacturing facility, but a service facility for the wind farms, as has been stated, were that we could produce reasons that would be sustainable at appeal under planning legislation that would not mean that we'd not just turn this down as a matter of course tonight and then be stuck with the fact that an appeal would immediately overturn it. I'm not saying that is the reason why we shouldn't refuse it. I'm saying it's something that we need to consider before we start voting in favour of refusal. So, first of all, can we just have a quick look? Can you just talk us through what is being proposed and the height of what is being proposed relative to the residential developments next door? Thank you, through you, Chair. Uh, so, so this is the site at the moment. It's currently in two car parks. The site um, slopes down from Alabama Way um, towards the river. Um, so there's an existing car park here at a higher level and another one here at a lower level. Um, the proposal is to site um, the, the building here with car parking around the perimeter. The office part of the building um, would be here and the warehouse um, um, at the back. Um, as, as I alluded to in, in my presentation, this is not heavy industry, um, it's, it's warehousing um, with, with some small um, processes and, and office, uh, which, uh, which as I said, uh, would take place here. Um, in terms of um, what, what the building will look like, So this is the elevation, the north facing elevation, so this is the office space here and then this is the, um, uh, the warehouse facility. Um, these windows here, as I said in my presentation, they're non-light emitting, um, so you wouldn't get any light coming through those, um, through those windows. And they've been put in place really to break up the starkness of the elevation as was previously um, proposed. And the balcony, um, it's like a Juliet balcony really, it's a feature rather than um, being able to, to access um, the balcony so there wouldn't be any people um, walking on it. So that's the north facing elevation. Um, and then this is, this is the, other, the, uh, the other part, so there's a return here. Um, again, that would be non-light emitting um, um, windows. And as I said in the presentation, there would be um, increased vegetation with what we're, we're describing as this living wall um, where um, you would have uh, evergreen <coughs> plants growing up the elevation um, to provide um, a buffer, as it were, um, to the starkness of, of, of the elevation. The gables remain as previously proposed, but the ridge height has been lowered. Um, um, to what was previously um, uh, proposed. Uh, I do have some um, well, this is, this is um, looking down across the site. Uh, Primary Wharf is a four story building um, and we acknowledge that the impact of this development is likely to be more impactful on, the, um, on those apartments that are on the ground floor and the first floor. Um, and then as you get to the second, uh, the second and third floor, um, that impact becomes a, a, a lot less um, apparent. So this is taken, um, and I think it is important to say that Priory Wharf is already set higher than the application site. So it is at a higher level than the application site. So those apartments would look down on the site and across the building. So this is a view that's taken across um, from Priory Wharf. 
and then this is um, looking up from the river front um, towards the north western uh, yeah, northwest and northeastern corner of the of the site so that's looking up from the river front and then the third one is uh, that's as you come down to the site from the, uh, the access at Alabama Way. So that gives me an impression of, of what the building will look like. Uh, just uh, two other very quick questions. Have you got a section that serves the height of this building? Uh, but what is the height of the building? That's the first question. The second question is, do you have a section which shows this building relative to the residential properties to see what height it is relative to the, to the height of the flat block of the apartment? To, um, as I've raised the question, I think last time uh, this this was here, um, having heard the uh, presentation from LDRA um, in objection last time, we, again um, similar uh, presentation. Was that uh, Steve? You remember asking about um, EM6 and the effect on neighbouring businesses? And Pat Cleary is quite right. But it, it was certainly a matter that we, uh, in my mind, were considering it in the round. Clearly, there is a an impact on, on residents, and that's reflected in the original reason for refusal. But there's also an impact on neighbouring businesses, and you know, if, if, if we're considering this on the grounds of we're going to get so many jobs, well, it's also going to be balanced against uh, jobs that might potentially be lost to resource. Now, I don't recall why um, the effect on neighbouring businesses didn't make it into the final um, reason for refusal. Um, but it was certainly uh, for, for, for clarity um, a matter that weighed on my mind then, um, as it as it still do, as it still does uh, now. Uh, I know from the report, you know, there's an appeal in uh, anyway, presumably it's, it's on hold as a flash application, and it's certainly the case, isn't it, that when an appeal is heard, then everything to be like off the table and the inspector will take a, a new view. Um, as to all of the policies that have been considered and whether it feels any of the policies have been, if you like, reached, uh, including impact on residents and impact on uh, neighbouring businesses. Okay, Dennis. Thank you, Chair. Um, I mean, I agree with what Matt was saying before, the changes that have been put forward now, I really do believe that it's going to change the development to north. Um, we're talking, it's a 16 metre high, 50 foot high development. So to say it's not going to affect the properties, it's going to affect the properties. Of course, it is. there's 130 properties there. Um, and, you know, to me, removing seven roof lights and pedestrian door and an elevation of some glass and an evergreen screen doesn't really, you know, just doesn't seem to be enough for me. And I mean, I refused this last time, and I think I'm going to prove refusal tonight on the same ground, Chair. I think the just yeah. before you do, uh, you would like to make a clarification over something. Okay. Yeah. Through, through you, Chair, um, I think it is important to make the point that it isn't just the physical changes that have been made into this application, a lot of the supporting information. Um, that has been provided with this application, it goes into a lot more detail, a lot more assessment has been made this time around 
about noise impact and noise disturbance and all those sorts of issues. These are the things that we would have to defend if we refuse this application at an appeal. So this time around, that information is a lot stronger and the assessments that have been made as part of this application um, provide a lot more detail than were previously considered with the one that was refused. Chair, I still wish to, you know, do a refusal on this because to me, I know it says here about the environment, and um, they have no objection. Now, I'm not being funny, Chair, but this this isn't up yet. This isn't in work, and this isn't, you know, a manufacturing at all. So until it actually is, you don't know what the <coughs> impact is going to be on on the residents. Just to be clear, it's not a manufacturing use. Well, I'm not being funny, this is a tidal, you know, we're talking chips coming in, it could be one or two and three o'clock in the morning. You can't tell me that there's not going to be any noise from any of this. Just to come back on that point, um, all of that has been, uh, has been assessed in the noise assessment, um, and those, those are detailed on the late list for you. Um, but just to be very clear, it's not a manufacturing use, it's a warehouse and office facility. Not manufacturing. Mm. Still wishing to move the views on the chair. Okay. And the proposed development by reason of its siting is considered would result in unacceptable loss of amenity for the occupiers of residential development prior to war by virtue of increased noise, general disturbance, and a poor outlook. And this is policy EM6. If approved, it will be contrary to policy EM6 of the unitary development plan. Thank you, Chair. Okay, with has a move to refuse. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Chair. Okay, if we. Before we move to the vote, I mean, I appreciate that that's probably a, a repeat of what was last time. But it weighs in my mind the fact that there is a business also. Um, so I raised that last time. I don't know why it didn't make it into the reasons for refusal last time. I assume I might be advised that I can't just add three things in that went in the refusal, even though they might have been considered last time. The minutes aren't detailed enough, are they? If you like to give a proper phrase for comments that were made by members, even though we have the benefits of Mr. Places, um, YouTube's. Uh, to be able to double check what was said in the tone of the debate and, and the matter that, and matters that were raised. What we end up with is a reason for a refusal that might not entirely represent every view that was put on the table. Now that might have been something we will advise on. <coughs> Thank you. 
Excuse me, could I just ask you to move forward, please? Because I have got a cough and I'm, I'm really struggling to uh, to shout as hard. Well. won't have vehicles, 
we all live in the real world, we know that won't be the case. Many of these people will have vehicles. So I do think that this will create an issue with parking. And obviously I've got to weigh that up with the with the pros if you like, but I just don't buy into the argument that there won't be issues with parking of this development. Okay, does anybody else like to speak though? Okay, Jen, just say there is something being done, isn't it? They're going to be putting double yellow lines on so that there's no parking on the second column there. Through you, Chair, uh, there's a condition on the late list that um, extends the current waiting restrictions around the, um, the, the junction of, uh, of Magazine Lane and Rosen Street, so it, it um, extends those double yellow lines so there wouldn't be any additional parking on that road. Thank you for calling for that. Um, the Office of Recommendation is to approve subject to the conditions listed on the additional condition number seven on the late list. Do we have a move for that, please? Thank you. Do we have a second? Oh, sorry. Thank you, Cathy. Do we have a second, then? Thank you. Okay. Um, all those in favour? Those against? Okay, that's fine, thank you. Okay, if we move to agenda item six, uh, the land of the Ring of Nine, Dolphin Drive. Uh, Matthew, can we have a presentation, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. The proposal seeks permission for the erection of a two story building at the rear of the site to accommodate four one bedroom apartments. The site is currently used as a service yard in connection with the car repair garage located along the southern boundary of the site. The area is predominantly residential in character, and the proposals would include the removal of this non conforming use, which would be secured by condition. There are residential units to the front of the site along the north and western boundaries. The new block of apartments would be located some 24 metres from the nearest neighbour, <coughs> ensuring the council's minimum separation distances are achieved. Dedicated parking spaces will be provided on site with private amenity space also included. The proposals may result in a small demand for additional on-street parking. However, as I said, there is on-street parking provided within this scheme. On balance, the proposed development is considered to be an appropriate use of the site, securing the removal of a non-conforming commercial use, which would result in an improvement of amenity to occupiers of residential properties surrounding the site. The application is uh, recommended for approval. Again, there's no petition in respect of this application, but it's before the committee because SDA um, is, an, is the agent and has been a single objection. Is there a council like to speak on this? Would you like to come forward? If you can just state your name for the report, please. Hi, uh, everybody. Yes, uh, Councillor David Mitchell, Eastern Ward Councillor. I concur with everything the planning officer has said. This is uh, a garage in the best of other words that's uh, being used at the moment. The proposal is far better for the area and the community. But that's it. Members to support the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Very refreshing. The officer's recommendation is. I'm sorry, can we come ask somebody to move this one? David and Wendy's second, thank you. Um, the officer's recommendation is to approve the subjective conditions listed. All those in favour? That's unanimous, that's carry, thank you. If we can now move to agenda item 7 on pages 31 to 38, um, I'll keep up our presentation please. Primarily, industri 
primarily residential, on the application side. <laughs> on the application side has previously been in commercial use, although um, it's currently vacant. There are some health-related uses within Field Road, although the predominant land use is residential. The proposed building's footprint is similar to that of the original building on site. The proposal would include undercroft parking at a ratio of one space per unit. All 13 units would be affordable units, resulting in 100% affordable provision. The design of the proposed apartment block is modern and contemporary, using a mixed palette of materials including brick, render and aluminium flashing. The design of the building is not considered to be inappropriate to the area. The scale of the building is different to the two-storey dwellings that make up the majority of house type in the area, However, the links of design and the proximity of non-residential buildings means that this proposed building would not look out of place on the street scene. The proposal achieves the council separation distances, even having regard to the additional store we proposed. The site is located within good access to local shops and amenities and public transport routes. The proposed access to the site would be via Field Road. The proposal seek to reuse the vacant and somewhat derelict site for the use that is considered appropriate to the area. On balance, the proposed development represents a positive contribution to the area, reusing the vacant site of land, uh, of land for affordable housing. The proposal is recommended for approval there is a qualified petition of rejection. Is the petitioner here? Would you like to come forward, please? If you could, um, when we're ready, if you can press the silver button and state your name when you have five minutes to speak. Thank you, Chair. My name is Tony Pritchard and I live in New York. Um, I would like to start by raising our concern about the application paperwork submitted by the applicant on, and accepted by this council as correct on the 27th of November 2014 and shown on the Council's planning internet site as information for interested parties when clearly the application papers, description and drawings showing the public car park as part of the development and also requesting permission for 21 flats, not 13 as you have today. The application and advertised description differ on three, possibly even four counts. Surely all the paperwork for a planning application has to be correct or it cannot proceed. This has been confusing to people as not clear what is being applied for. I have raised this twice with officers over the consultation period in December, as it was I who spotted their mistake, as they had not. And again last Friday, the 16th of February. Even in your committee papers for the 20th of January, it showed that the public car park was part of the development. It seems that this application has been just as confusing to your officers as it has been to local residents. It seems that this application is a mixture of two applications. Is it legal for this application to be considered tonight? Can you council safely make a decision knowing that this application has not been submitted correctly? A petition of over 81 signatures from local residents of Field Road area who have objected to this application as they believe that this will be an overdevelopment and also not in keeping with the rest of the road as it is a three-storey build and existing buildings are two-storey. Also, there is concern for residents of Sandwich Road located behind this development because of its size and location is going to impact on light and privacy to their habitable rooms. Six by one bedroom flats could have the potential for 12 cars, and seven by two bedroom flats could have, an extra, have 21 extra cars, a total of 33 cars. Where are they going to park? Then we have their, their design proposal, 5.4. Our city impression shows access by the cars to the left of the build, which I believe is using the car park. On their building access strategy, 8.1, it gives the impression of a car parking base for the new development. Field Road is already overdeveloped with three health centres, which are located next to each other, like a mini hospital. Two of them right next door to this development. Local church, chemist and many local resident properties, which most do not have off-road parking. The main health centre built in 2009, we now understand, has over 3,000 patients alone with 43 nurses, 10 doctors and with specialised doctors coming to do minor operations and centre staff. 
It also has a drug dependency unit, a teaching centre and many more services located all just in this one centre alone. Previous planning committees over the years have agreed that traffic and parking is a major issue in this road, as well as highways committee just weeks ago went against a recommendation by council officers to get rid of a small public car park next to this development. As this committee also considered parking in, and as this committee also committed par uh, par considered parking in Field Road a major problem in recent past. Then we have the safety issue. Adding more cars to an already congested road will add to parking on pavements, gridlock outside the health centres, which will then affect the safety of pedestrians, many of them elderly. The two small business businesses that were look that were on this site did not, did not have many customers visiting of the, because of the nature of their business. The site was occupied by a company called the Smithy, and for many years they used paints and, and galvanising process to protect the steel. Chemicals used in galvanising and even lead in some paints could have contaminated the land with heavy metals. Can you just stop one minute now? There's also concerns from the, 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 the funeral directors that runs adjacent to the car park. They are concerned that the residents of this new build, uh, their windows are going to be looking right onto the back rear of the funeral directors and they will be looking as they're watching people being taken in and out of coffins and whatever. We would ask this committee to not allow this item to be considered tonight due to the fact that the application paperwork was invalid on four counts. Application paperwork includes public car park as part of the development. This is an application for 21 flats, not 13. They state there are trees and hedges on the site, but there are none. They have ticked none to the question of contamination. If you do decide to carry on them, don't let this, this road be overdeveloped even more than it already is. Field Road is not a large road and is already at bursting point. You have a flawed consultation. Do residents not have the right to, to correct information for them to make proper representation? Put the safety of residents first, put the residents' views and peace of mind first, and refuse this planning application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, well done. Five <laughs> okay, um, is the applicant of the agent here? Would you like to come forward to make a representation to the committee in support of this application? Again, if you can just state your name and you have five minutes and there's a button, so a button there to press it. Okay? My name is Stephen Fieldsend and I'm from Hutchester Hall Architecture representing the developer. Um, the development is for 13 uh, dwellings. Uh, the original application did encompass uh, the adjoining car park uh, when it was deemed to be up for sale. Um, um, we, we have uh, redesigned the current scheme for 13 um, dwellings uh, with 13 uh, car parking spaces, which is a one to one ratio for 100% affordable housing. Uh, which um, the Magenta Living and the HEA have uh, been given back into the scheme. Um, the parking itself is all off street parking. Um, we've tried to uh, listen to local residents with um, the parking um, numbers and allocation, if you like. So, with the design of the scheme, what we've done is um, we've allowed most, nearly up to all of the uh, parking to be within uh, the development site. Um, Looking at um, the planning um, approval, uh, notice or recommendation for approval, it, it lists that the building is a, is a modern use, and we believe that um, with the derelict site at the moment, it will um, improve um, Field Road itself with the street scene, and also um, upgrades to Field Road itself. Um, the building is of a brick nature, uh, with modern interpretation on the terrace road house, we believe that not only that, um, with uh, conversations with Merseyside Police, um, the dwellings that obviously face the adjoining car park at the moment um, um, act as a passive security measures to meet the secure by design requirements for the um, parking next door and the substation at the back of the site you can see, which at the moment um, has some social issues um, according to Merseyside Police. Um, the development itself has 14 cycle stands with the use of um, electric um, scooter charging points internally. It's all lifetime homes compliant. Um, and hopefully, um, looking at the application, you'll, you'll see looking at the site itself, 
we will encourage um, a little bit of growth and um, bring back a much needed street scene to Field Road. Thank you for sticking with five minutes. Is there a Lord Council here who would like to speak on this? No, 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 no. One of the uh, things I would really like to get clarified for committee before we go any further and for the general public is the, um, the fact uh, that Mr. Pritchard seemed to think that um, the application was not the correct application. Can we just have some discussion on that, please? Uh, thank you, through you, Chair. Um, as my colleague uh, Mrs. Day explained to Mr. Pritchard before <coughs> Christmas, and I, as I personally have explained to Mr. Pritchard myself, the application is accurate on the internet. It's an, it's an application that has evolved since it was first submitted. It was originally for 21 application, uh, for, uh, for 21 apartments that has been reduced down to 13. And as the applicant himself um, said, originally it did include this car park, this public car park next to the site. Um, and as that no longer became available to the applicants, then again the scheme evolved. But as, those, as the scheme has evolved and, and the application has been amended, that information has been updated on the, on the, um, on the web. Um, so it isn't an incorrect information, and all the information available to the public that should be available to the public is there for them to see. Okay, I'm going to open this up to the committee now. Anybody like to say anything on this? Jim? Yes, um, thank you, yeah, Sherry. I've very often gone to the internet to look at plans and often they take give away uh, for uh, an update to the decision for fact revised revised plans on it. Uh, this is a big one, um, I think the, the, the point I just want to make a uh, lot of the objections seem to be around um, parking but, but I take it from reading the report and, and listening to the presentation from the applicants that there is off street parking associated with the development at ground floor. Now, I think the only other concern that I didn't see in the original uh, list of representations was this business about the, the proximity of the intake here. I'm not sure whether um, we're making um, provision for that, um, for, for that, for that issue that, that has been raised um, in this development. I'm not sure exactly where the intake is in, in, uh, in relation to the development. Uh, thank you, through you, Chair. Yes, um, the, uh, the development uh, provides undercroft parking um, within the site, um, as, as the applicant has said. And as I said in my presentation, at a ratio of, of one um, space per unit. This, uh, this piece of land here, adjacent to the site, is a public car park. Um, there's a car park here as well. Um, the undertaker is, is located here. Um, on the site, um, but the orientation of the building is, has been maximised so that the principal elevations face onto Field Road and, and, and towards the, um, the opposite direction, towards the health centre. Thank you, Matthew. David? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Just a very quick um, matter of clarification for the benefit of the audience and of those present. Can Matthew, can you just confirm that the information contained within our agenda black and white is correct. Because, I mean, you know, we've had an allusion to the fact that to Tony Fritchard thinks some of this is wrong. All I need to know from my perspective, this is the document I look at. Yeah. And this document, can you just confirm that is correct in all respects? Through you, Chair. Through you, Chair. The information, the report is based on the most up-to-date information. Uh, the amended plans, as Councillor Kelly said, um, the amended plans that are, that are on the website. So the amendments that have been made as the application has, has evolved, this uh, report makes reference to those plans. So yes, it is all, all correct and up to date. Thank you. Was that it, David? Yeah, that's all I wanted to get. Thank you. Thank you. Good to do that. Mas? Yeah, I um, found that clarification quite useful because it means that what I'm about to say is valid. <laughs> but um, I'd just like to say, actually, this seems, from, from what I've seen and what I've looked at on the website in terms of the plans, actually quite a decent development. Um, we are really, really short on affordable housing at the moment, so I think anything that adds that to an area like New Brighton, which is growing, is, is fantastic. Um, also, the fact that the state and space is um, given as well, I think so often we have applications before us which provide no parking whatsoever. 
uh, and often we can't take that into consideration. So the fact that the developer has you know, provided 30 more per unit, I think, you know, needs to be um, considered um, appropriate, I think. Okay, can I take our first? <coughs> Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I attended the site visit and I think, um, I think this is a good application and I think 13 affordable housing units is a distinct improvement on what's there at the moment. I just had a question. Uh, we've imposed condition number seven on site the parking, but the agent mentioned that the plans include 14 cycle stands, so I'm a little bit confused as to if that's the case, why have we had to impose condition on site the parking? Thank you to you, Chair. The plans do, um, um, do make provision for cycle parking spaces in the undercroft element with the, with the car parking. What they don't do, however, is detail um, the cycle parking, um, what, what type it will be, how secure it will be. So um, the condition, so yes, we're getting cycle parking, but we just need a little bit more detail about what it will look like and, 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 and those sorts of things. Okay, so. Thank you, Chair. Um, I too was pleased to see the consideration for um, parking, where the refreshing to see some of the parking provision offered and by very affordable homes. But the petition did mention that there was some uh, consideration of overlooking on the houses nearby. Just for clarity of the convenience, could you talk about that? Again, thank you through you, Chair. Um, as I mentioned in my presentation, all the usual separation distances are achieved. Um, even having regard to the um, additional, it's a three 